So the 60 Minutes piece just dropped and it was gangbusters. Everybody's talking about it. Every other news uh, station is reporting on UFOs right now. This is all over the world. People are jazzed about UFOs and everybody's talking about it. Let's dive in. Welcome to Mystery Road. Before we uh, get too far into it, please hit like, please subscribe, share this on social media. Oh, and as I'm talking about it, please comment below and let me know what you think about all this. Okay, let's get into it. So the piece has got Lou Elizondo, it's got Chris Mellon, it's got a lot of the heavy hitters that we in the UAP UFO community are familiar with. And uh, it does a pretty good job at covering the basics. Uh, there's very little of it that uh, was not covered in the original New York Times article or the subsequent news pieces on it uh, from all of the major news stations. But still, it was covered in a respectful manner. It was a long piece at over 13 minutes, and this is on probably the most mainstream uh, big news uh, um, program. So that in itself is huge. This is reaching a mainstream American audience uh, and, and trending worldwide. So this is a really big deal. Uh, this is getting the conversation going in places where it had not gotten to before. This is exactly what Lou Elizondo promised uh, a week or two ago in the interview uh, that I comment, uh, commented on a few days ago. Uh, and he promised that there was going to be a big development happening that would take the conversation to places it had not gone before. At the time, I was hoping he meant you know, more videos and stuff like that. But in its own way, this is far bigger than that would be because this is about disclosure. This whole thing is about disclosure. It's about elevating the conversation and starting the conversation uh, because many people, uh, in fact, possibly the, even the majority of people still, still think this is a joke topic. The, the giggle factor is high on all things alien, supernatural, what have you. So uh, just broaching this topic in a serious way, getting people thinking about it and talking about it in mainstream heartland America is huge. Now, did we learn anything new from this piece? Well, no, the, the people that have been studying this for a while probably didn't get much new out of it. But the main thing is this is going to propel the conversation. This is going to get people uh, that we all know, people in our family, our friends, uh, you know, every time we have talked about it, you know, maybe they roll their eyes. Well, some of them are not going to be rolling their eyes anymore. Some of them, the next time you talk about it, they are going to be asking you questions about it. Say, hey, you've, you've looked into this topic. You've been researching it. What do you know about this? Can you tell me about this? I've already uh, seen that on social media. People that have, you know, historically uh, not received, uh, you know, posts that I've made about UFOs favorably are now interested in it. They are now looking to me for answers. And, you know, I'm, you know, not going to give them any answers because uh, I don't pretend to know any. Um, I know some, I have done a lot of research on this. I can tell you what the evidence suggests but I am going to let people come to their own conclusions. But, uh, but yeah, I have certain thoughts about what's going on, and uh, I think it's very complicated, and there are multiple things happening. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, I'm not going to uh, claim to know anything, uh, but I, I can certainly tell you what the evidence suggests on certain topics. So what does all this mean? This means that the UFO topic is now mainstream. 60 Minutes is doing long pieces on this. Lou Elizondo and Chris Mellon have been on 60 Minutes uh, in a long, um, very positive piece. There was a previous piece on the same network, CBS, uh, CBS uh, Sunday Morning, that did a fairly uh, long piece on UFOs as well, but theirs was not as favorable. They gave equal time to the asteroid Uamua and the SETI program. Now, nothing against the SETI program or the asteroid Uamua, but they are hardly uh, ships flying around our atmosphere 
that the military has confirmed are unidentified. Uh, so, you know, maybe Uamua was not just an asteroid. I don't know. I, I, you know, apparently there were a few directional changes in it that can't be explained. Uh, however, these advanced beings are zipping around our atmosphere in our oceans and abducting people. Um, they don't need to be pretending, pretending to be an asteroid. That's, you know, I don't understand why that's interesting or important in any way. Uh, I, you know, maybe there's some aliens that like to pretend to be living in an asteroid or uh, sending probes in a vehicle that looks like an asteroid. Potentially, I suppose, but that's far less interesting than uh, pyramid-shaped UFOs swarming our warships. They also gave equal time to the SETI program that is the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And uh, I used to be interested in the SETI program. Uh, I thought it was, you know, probably the, the best way for us to find alien life out there in the cosmos. And if you don't know, it's people that listen to outer space for uh, sounds coming from the stars. Uh, you know, possibly communication from alien races. But now we know these things are already here. They're flying around our atmosphere, abducting people, mutilating cows, and whatever else the hell they're doing. So uh, listening to the stars just doesn't get me going. I don't understand why a serious researcher into this topic, uh, you know, uh, would get equal time to SETI and Uamua as they would to Lou Elizondo and Chris Mellon. To me, that is a BS. However, even in that, I see a silver lining because in the old days, whenever a network would do a piece on UFOs, they would always get equal time to a debunker. They would have a pro-UFO advocate and they would have the debunker. Uh, and uh, the network would typically side with the debunker and um, you know cancel out anything that the pro-UFO advocate had to say. Um, but now, uh, like on the CBS Sunday morning segment, uh, they had their debunkers, the SETI guy and the Uamua people, uh, who were also pro-alien. So even the debunkers, people were saying, hey, don't look over here at the, you know, A-tip, look over here at Uamua. Um, even those people are saying that aliens exist. So even, even there I see a, a positive sign. But uh, enough about the CBS Sunday morning segment. Uh, let's get back to the 60-minute piece. Well, we have Commander Dave Fravor and his co-pilot, uh, the first uh, female pilot that has come out talking about this. They give a description of their encounter with the uh, famous Tic Tac that, in a way, started this whole uh, ball rolling. And uh, it was very interesting. And uh, we get to hear that... Uh, uh, you know, again, about the thing in the water. I don't know why the interviewer didn't follow up on that. Yes, the Tic Tac by itself is amazing. And the other objects in the sky that were seen and uh, recorded on radar were uh, incredible. Um, but there was a big thing in the water, a huge object that the Tic Tac was coming out of or communicating with. We don't know what, but it was close to this thing in the water. What was it doing? Why was it uh, in close proximity to this thing in the water? I, uh, and what was the thing in the water? Apparently there is some submarine data on it, some, uh, some sonar uh, that uh, people, at least one person has gone on the record talking about how this thing moved away at a very fast speed and is just one of many objects uh, that have been caught on sonar and possibly other devices by submarines and that they, they have seen or recorded these things for many years, but they do not talk about it. Uh, there's only been very few people willing to go on the record talking about this in relation to the submarines, possibly because all of that is classified uh, or possibly because the instruments themselves are classified or they don't want to raise a panic among people. Who knows, but uh, whatever, I'm surprised the interviewer did not press uh, the pilots on that, uh, and that very few people do. That is one of the most interesting things about the whole TikTok incident, 
isn't necessarily the Tic Tac, it's the giant thing in the water. But whatever, so the uh, the pilots do discuss it, and uh, you know, it's, it's interesting, it sounds like the female co-pilot may be less pro-alien and more pro-foreign uh, adversary uh, technology. Uh, that's fine. I, I think that some of the others are also on that same train, uh, which is interesting. Uh, and if there are is if there is any evidence that foreign adversaries have this technology, I would be very interested to see it. Uh, personally, I, I think that's all uh, BS and that's wishful thinking. You can uh, wish that alien beings that were vastly more powerful than us weren't here and say, oh, well, it's China or Russia, but since China stole all of their technology from us through spies, uh, in Russia, if they had the technology, they would have taken over the world years ago. Uh, it's, it's unlikely to be anybody else, and it's certainly not us. Lou Elizondo, Chris Mellon had access to all of the black ops stuff, all of the black budget stuff. Um, so yeah, black budget, not necessarily black ops but they know where all these secret projects are, where all the secret money goes to. And uh, they categorically say that it is not us, and I believe them. Um, if it were us, uh, it, it doesn't make any sense for them to operate this way. They jammed, the, you know, in the TikTok, TikTok incident, they jammed the radar of Commander Dave Fravor, which is an act of war. So I highly doubt that our own people would be committing acts of war against our own people. Also, any explanation for the phenomenon has to account for the fact that these things have been seen since at least the 1940s. So, yeah, any, yeah, I'm not buying any uh, explanation that it is created by modern day humans. Now, could it be time travelers? Could it be alternate timeline humans? Sure, but uh, it's not us. Um, but whatever, this is the 60 Minutes audience, and these are uh, military guys that are not, you know, have not researched this incident heavily. However, they are participants, participants and witnesses to it, and we shouldn't discount what they have to say. Anyway, so that those are my thoughts on the, the 60 Minutes segment. Uh, it was very exciting to see this reach the mainstream audience. And I'm very curious to see where the conversation goes from there. Following the 60 Minutes uh, segment, the, uh, there were numerous other segments, both on TV and in print uh, and on the Internet from major outlets, CNN, Fox, etc., all were running with stories about UFOs. So this conversation just got kicked up a notch, a major notch, maybe several notches, uh, Lou Elizondo was completely right about that. Uh, hat, hats off to you, Lou. So what did you think about all this? Did you enjoy the 60 Minutes piece? Do you think it was a, a really well done, insightful, positive piece that uh, uh, advanced the conversation on this? Or do you think it was all a big joke and a waste of time or somewhere in the middle? Please let me know what you thought about all this in the comments below. Uh, and uh, don't forget to hit uh, subscribe and like. It really helps the channel. I, I would really appreciate it trying to build this channel and get something going here. Okay, until next time, Mystery Road out.